What is up my little legends? We are back playing more Doki Doki Literature Club. Let's hop into it. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder if she was talking about with Sayori. Who should I show my poem to first? Okay, so in the last episode, Sayori was acting very, very weird and different. So let's see what is up with Sayori. Hmm, it's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. Oh yeah, our poem wasn't, I don't think we managed to be able to get it to Sayori's liking. Yeah, you wrote this for someone else. Ah, that's a bummer. Oh well, probably Yuri. Oh shoot, I think we did get a lot of Yuri ones. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant though. But it's okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if I can do the voice today. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> all right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! She didn't show us her poem. I'm gonna go home a bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. She didn't show us her poem. Weird, okay. Ah, oh, Natsuki, what do you have to criticize today? Oh man, this is seriously a step backwards. Huh? I liked your last two way better than this one. Ah, this poem sucked. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can't be mad at you for trying different things. As long as you're not just trying to impress Yuri or something. Oh, it was extremely a Yuri poem, I guess. Gross. <laughs> well, Yuri's gonna love it then. Okay, okay. Like you said, I'm allowed to try new things. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems anyways? Is that more of a compliment to me? Ugh, we should make Natsuki a poem. Uh, eh? N no, gross. It's not like I care. It's just that one of us in this club has to make sure you're not slacking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um... It's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. <laughs> guh? Natsuki elbow connects with my stomach. Oh, there's that kind of a guh. Oh, maybe I won't mind scaring you away after all. I was just joking. Oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> hmm, how the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I really should just watch my mouth around Natsuki. Anyway, Natsuki holds her pomo to me like nothing ever happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought I had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you dream, daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Aw, that was super good, like, compared to her last poems. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. 
kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So if you, oh, so if you decided to write about the beach first, then came up with the message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing. She wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Ugh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. Very metaphorical, I would say. But there's nothing wrong with that doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. That was a good poem. I liked Yuri's poem. Mmm, alright. Yuri, hello. Jen, this is wonderful. Of course you love it, Yuri. It's for you. <laughs> I can feel the emotion that you poured into it. Is this the result of trying what I suggested yesterday? Oh, she did suggest. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. You did a good job of explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more feeling. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? Oh, we're having a moment. I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, I just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, oh, and besides, they're the wrong voices, oh well. People would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends? For some reason, Yuri doesn't respond. Oh, I don't think Yuri had really any friends. Yuri. Yuri smiles sadly. Jen. During lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? Aw, I like Yuri. Oh, why did I overlook her so much? <laughs> and those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Jen. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing with you that I really understood what I was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No. That's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know, I'm a difficult person, Jen. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like everyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. Aww. Sorry, Sayori. I mean, I don't know. This moment's real cute. <laughs> oh, I missed what she said. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I didn't know I could do that. Oh, that's nice. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Aww. Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Ooh. Oh yeah, right, the beach theme. A marvel millions of years in the making. 
where the womb of earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky, an expansive of bliss, but beneath grey, rolling clouds, an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes in. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where, the to where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils, turn back, and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Ooh, that was a pretty poem. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She, she did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought process. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's not surprised she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just want with her request. Yuri, you are kind of astounding. Stuck up. I think Natsuki just wanted to relate to you. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad writing about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my own thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Monica. Hi, Jen. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Great job, Jen. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easy for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That's why I always, oh, it always counts when I put some effort in. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yeah, we messed up with Sayori. Uh, oh. Yuri likes it when the readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry about that so much. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by, new try or by trying new things. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Uh, all right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of the lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift to the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky? Until one day, the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and fall and fall evermore, gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless, but a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Hmm. I don't really understand that one. 
I feel like I'm learning and looking for answers are the same sort of thing that gives life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all had the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, that! Huh. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Oh god, let's see what this is. Are you ever too shy to shy share? <laughs> Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid that it's not good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put in so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling that you are writing is good or okay or bad, they will, oh my gosh, my, my reading ability, it's gone. They'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's so much easier encouraging people that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That one seemed a bit more normal than her last one. Mm. <laughs> okay, you three, we're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You devi deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Huh. Stagnant air is calm and foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. She actually wasn't feeling, to oh. <laughs> uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all times not to go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? That curious expression coming off Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right, Natsuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm gonna be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, Yuri, you can, um, <gasps> guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. N no that's not like it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Hmm. N now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are harder on you when she's not around. Huh? That may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Ah, about that, I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Jen. The one who is truly useless. Oh, <laughs> I thought Monica said that and I was like, what? <laughs> uh, don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really be appreciative of that. 
Uh, ooh, do I get to choose? <gasps> ooh, that's, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? So because we didn't write Sayori a poem, she went home early, so now we don't get to help her with her project. Aw, oh, that's a bummer. Hmm. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I can give you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned you would like to handle the baking on your own. Jen may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So, therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. Now how hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds like you're just making excuses for Jen too. Well, what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Jen to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry, I was just saying though. Jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah. Jen, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Huh. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm gonna go with... <gasps> oh! Oh, I do get to pick Sayori still. Hmm. Oh my goodness, this is actually a tough decision. Oh no. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like we messed up with Sayori, but it might not be too late because we messed up trying to make her poems. So, I don't know. And Monica, I don't know, I feel bad. I haven't spent like any time with Monica, but they haven't really given you any like chance to, I don't think, unless I like super missed something. Yuri, I do like Yuri. Hmm, Natsuki is like, ugh, sorry, she's my least favorite right now. So we'll just take Natsuki out. Um, you know what? Because this is super awkward, I'm gonna pick Sayori. <laughs> I mean, if it's gonna be anyone, then I'd prefer to help Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and, but Monica said, Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? Oops. No, no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult, but just think of the club, okay? Oh. Oh. So we couldn't even pick Sayori. Mm, should I eeny, meeny, miny, mo it? <laughs> I kind of am interested in what Yuri has to say, so I think I'm gonna pick Yuri. Uh, well, it'll probably be more useful helping out Yuri. M me Are you serious? Why would you- Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying- Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Jen? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So is that everything we need to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Ah, oh, she's blushing. Do you feel the same way, Jen? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Hmm. Natsuki! What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. N no, that's not what I meant at all. Huh? Yuxuri anxious. Yuxuri, what? <laughs> Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. Uh, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Jen picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kind of surprised, though. Well, why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I, I know, I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. 
Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. Aw, I think we're helping Yuri like come out of her shell a little bit. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Oh, she was trying to lighten the mood. Even if it didn't work out perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. Sorry for making a big deal out of nothing. But I'm going to say this. Hmm? You better bet my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Ah, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the doors as they chat between each other. Ha <laughs> Oh, another special moment. Cute. Uh? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way. Yes. All right, then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Huh? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought it would be, I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. All right. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decide not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter either way. So I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make some make myself useful in some way. I'm not clearly, I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Oh man, I'm struggling on reading today. <laughs> Three days in a row of extensive reading. It's more than I've like talked all of like 2021 so far. Don't underestimate yourself, Jen. I think we'll make very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Oh, Yuri. I mean, she was my second option, but... <laughs> Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? <sighs> I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting that the one reason with the most common sense? I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? Hi. Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. It is as if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way to the door and Yuri follows. All right, I can't believe this. Yuri is going to be coming to my house on Sunday, even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, but who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. Oh, she even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like I've, we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. Poem time. Nope, okay. It's already Sunday. Oh. Ooh. I keep tell. oh, I forgot to read the previous one. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and so, and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, it's really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Hmm. Yeah. I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. We might have saved it because Sayori did 
like ask if I'd prefer to hang out with her or Yuri. And even though we're hanging out with Yuri, we did say we wanted to hang out with Sayori. So I think Sayori will forgive us, I think. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her to not run downstairs and greet me. I head up to the bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Jen! I sit down in her room. Oh, I love her outfit! That is such a cute little pink, like, shirt. Sayori forces a smile, and it's easy to say she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It's been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. What do you mean? Her room's like barely messy. <laughs> There's like one little piece of garbage down there. <laughs> so, um, I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are you supposed to be seeing Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Hey, how did she know that? Okay, that's weird. Unless, like, Yuri told her or Monica told her. I don't know. That's weird, though. Um, I feel like we must be getting pretty close to the end of the game. Like, I'm thinking that, like, the whole game is leading up to, like, the Sunday. And it kind of sucks because, like, I really wanted to hang out with uh, Sayori on the Sunday, not Yuri. But I think because, like, my guess is that we were supposed to get all of the poems to one specific person to, like, get their ultimate, like, their ultimate route. And I think we messed that up. I think we only got two out of three for Sayori. So I don't know, like, if this is a game with multiple endings or what, but, like, oh, I'm guessing it might be. Um... I'm thinking that we might still be able to salvage things with Sayori because we did get two out of three. So I think, I think we can salvage this still. <laughs> Monica told me, ah, Monica. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Are you going to be helping Monica today? Of course, but I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep! There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Aw, she's jealous. Mm. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Jen. Huh? Why can't I just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. Aww. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. I just want, it just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori, I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. Oh, Sayori's so sad. So just tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ha ha ha. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Jen. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Jen? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Mm, Sayori, why did you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. Oh, <laughs> my heart, oh no. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Oh my god, this makes me want to cry. <laughs> my eyes are getting all like... <laughs> Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? 
Why other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? Oh no! Oh my god! I was not expecting it to like turn like this. Ah! Oh, all right, give me a second. Okay, I think I can. I think I'm good. I think I can continue reading. <sighs> that's what it feels like, and that's why I just want to make everyone happy. It's true though. That is like a thing that yeah, people who tend to be very sad themselves want to see other people happy without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. It was very, like, I mean, I don't know. I kind of, definitely after the second time we had to start writing poems, I was very much cluing on to Sayori's, like, secret. Just because, like, I'll, you know, just like thinking back to her poems and stuff and like, like the words that would pop up, it, it made sense that someone was harboring a dark, deep secret. And I didn't expect it to be Sayori. I was thinking definitely like, I don't know, Monica was acting pretty suspicious. <laughs> but no, it turns out it's Sayori. I'm glad I went the Sayori route. <laughs> well, attempted to do the Sayori route. <sighs> How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not think about her? Why Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like you've been betraying your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Jen. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I want so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone can be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right. I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Jen. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. Mm. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish and I was punished by my heart hurting in the way I couldn't understand. And how you came here and it made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's when I'm going to accept these punishments because I deserve every last one. Oh, without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Oh, Jen, Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have had it any other way. Jen, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her side. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. It's Jen. Mm, she's so sad. <laughs> it's so hard to read. <laughs> it's just so sad. I, Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want her to know is that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have it to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Jen. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm in pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that really scary is, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. 
How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Yay! Um, uh, that's what I want. I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yay! Uh, why am I like getting so attached <laughs> to a cartoon or to an anime? Uh, my heart, my heart. <laughs> Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this had to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry about it too much. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it then. <sighs> okay, well, I say goodbye to Sayori, then exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about Yuri, oh, about it when Yuri is coming over too. I think Sayori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely gonna have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You could always have texted me. If I had known, I wouldn't have, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ha, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. Oh, I did a Sayori voice. And you did manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. <laughs> I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around it curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would really be embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Huh. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would have been even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there. I snatch Yuri's wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. What's in the drawer, Jen? Hmm? <laughs> she puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. So, um, should we get started? Huh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help our guest to a faraway place. Although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's just something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved and kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I brought something for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Nuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder-shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you? How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Uh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it per permit permeate <laughs> through your body. 
words. <laughs> Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. I don't know if I can keep up this voice right now. <laughs> you feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable. But you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion without anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon and hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I get a little intense as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels about sharing something she enjoys. Here's a marker, Jen. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbon. Uh, all right. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Ah? Uh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has this intricate pattern of, wave, of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. Oh, is that why she wrote about like that raccoon poem or whatever with the knife? Ooh, she likes knives, I guess. What is it? You're gonna think it's weird. What, Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know? If you promise you won't be too weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. Thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I feel like that's a trend right now, people being into knives. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to have to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri caref carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Jen! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah! She stares at it noticeably and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh -huh. Without worrying. Ew! Without warning, Yuri puts the finger in her mouth and licks the wound! Yuri! <laughs> I feel her tongue curl around my finger! Startled and instinctively pull my hand back! Okay, Yuri. Yuri kind of freaky. <laughs> oh! Please forgive me! What, that you're like a vampire? <laughs> I wasn't thinking. 
I, Yuri lowers her head and her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Oh, that's her. <laughs> that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How can I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise, but I guess she was just trying to help, right? There's a lot of bacteria in human saliva. <laughs> Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. I think you're underreacting a little. <laughs> ah, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? All right, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Jen, did you really just do that? Now we're even. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you do it like put two introverts in a room so they just like do weird stuff <laughs> Yuri just looked at me like I did something wrong <laughs> I knew this would be a bad idea if not for the sweet aroma of jasmine oil the air would be extremely heavy right now you're so weird Jen Yuri giggles shyly oh she like it <laughs> eh? Yuri calling me weird I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it's already stopped bleeding. I see, that's relieving. Relieving? Oh, okay. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to progress on the paper. Do, 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 do. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them on, oh, side by side. It looks better than I expected and it will be effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ha, huh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, oh, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you feel the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Ooh. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. What's a bathroom cup? Hmm. It must be a Japanese thing. I don't know. I put them on a plate and carry each paint that drips and bring it back to my room. Yuri? Yes? I come and see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, putting it back over her arm. Oh. She really likes knives. I'm thinking every single one of these girls now has a very dark storyline. Interesting. Okay. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to wrap the tablets, dropping them onto cups. So, I thought we could do something simple that would look nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner, starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset and nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall besides the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on the opposite side so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri brushes, Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. That kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a batter with watercolor feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Ah, uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel this way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like it when we can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes me feel a little bit nicer. I think it's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? 
Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner and grabs an unused paintbrush, but I move the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Huh? Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hand in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It's just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, uh, your face. There's a droplet of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got, accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return, return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Ah! Is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Ah? Uh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Aww. So Yuri's like very much missing having like people to emotionally connect with because she's like a bit of a loner at school and aww, she just likes to have like the physical connections and stuff too. Ah. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. An intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm, and suddenly her face seems much closer to mine than it was a moment ago. Ah! Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It, it's fine. Hmm. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she isn't able to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. Ooh. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots and look like that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add more lettering now? Uh, not yet. He needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than to have you bring it in the morning. I can do the lettering in the classroom before the event starts. Is that okay? It's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. <laughs> you say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong in assuming that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? No, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we'd have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself, I think it would be too irresponsible of me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the more important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all of her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Mm, it should be the last time. We're committed to Sayori. <laughs> Once Yuri packs up, I walk her to the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem. I'm glad I was able to help. Uh, just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Oh, Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out sometime. Ah, uh, I forgot you don't like to go out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. So you're very thoughtful, Jen. Yuri takes a step closer to me then briefly squeezes my hand. 
I kind of like that about you. Ooh. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori! Oh no! <laughs> uh, uh, hi, Jen! Sayori! Just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Jen. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I already must be on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll be able to... We'll, but we'll be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? <gasps> of course! No, I say... I said I was gonna hang out with Sayori. Sayori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves goodbye after her. Oh no! Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Ah, uh, well... I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was really being mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Jen? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Jen. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. What on earth has Monica been saying to Sayori? I'm so glad I didn't commit to hanging out with Monica. She's scheming and she's definitely a lot more like manipulative and ship or and stuff. Oh my god, I'm getting way too heated about this now. She's very manipulative, then we aren't realizing that. She wouldn't even let us hang out with Sayori. She made us go out with Yuri. <sighs> Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Jen. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori, it's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Jen, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I'd always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Where does see Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Hmm. <gasps> oh. Okay, well. Uh, bye, Yuri. <laughs> I love you, Sayori. Uh, I love you. <gasps> Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day... It helped me realize that you were truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side. Yay! Then I know we'll both be happy. Jen! Ah! Yay! All right. I think, <laughs> I think we did good. Suddenly, Sayori wraps her arms tightly around me. Jen, is this really okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you said it like that. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. <laughs> You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Jen. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this, Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment of my life. Oh, happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Jen. 
It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there for you every step of the way. That's all that matters now. Okay, I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <gasps> Yay! <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Jen! Sayori gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Ah, uh, I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me, but that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Um, I feel like we could have had a potentially better outcome with this if we had like managed to do all of her poems. She's still like kind of like, she's super uneasy about like, the, ah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. Yeah, exactly. We should have done more. So that is what Monica meant when she said, um, you can go back and change things. So if we had, if we had managed to been able to like get every single one of Sayori's poems, then things could be different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back the way they were. Is that why Sayori means about not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to make a happy future with her. <sighs> oh, poem time, right? Oh no, it's the day at the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. How come we didn't get to write our poem? Like, I assumed we would have had one more poem to write, like the one for the festival. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going into her house to wake her up, but decide that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry, and I gently roll it up to take with me. I, she sent a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can t spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. No, not Yuri. <laughs> Why do we include Yuri into this? <laughs> uh, but knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Okay, I don't know about Monica anymore. She, yeah, she's scheming. I know she's scheming. I can sense it. Um, I'm just guessing. Oh something in my eyeball. I'm just guessing we didn't do enough stuff that relates to Monica. Like, I don't know how we could have done anything like that relates to Monica, unless there's like a very specific word that Monica likes in the poem. Like that would be like almost impossible to get unless you cheated or something. Um, but I'm guessing Monica has like an interesting and extremely hard to get route of like, you know, getting her poems or whatever. <sighs> Jen, mm, speak of the devil. You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she's prepared to have at the poems while performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. Ah, you just picked a random poem, so that's why we didn't get to, like, write a poem. Um, I guess we just had too much going on with like Yuri and Sayori that, I don't know, we didn't have time to write a poem, I guess. So that is the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that one day this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful knowing I wasn't nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all? <laughs> you should have taken a little responsibility for her, Jen. I mean, especially after you ex your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Exchange? 
Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. The club president, I'm the club president after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone. Jeez, you don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Monica, what are you, like, what is your story? <laughs> eh? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason, I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid onto the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flip through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it out an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flip to Sayori's poem. It's different from the ones she practiced. The one that I haven't read before. Oh, get out of my head, get out of my head, get out of my head. Oh my God. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. I have a pit in my stomach. I think this is, I'm guessing this is where that warning at the beginning that this game is not suitable suitable for children is going to come into play. I'm just, I'm getting nervous that, <laughs> what's wrong? Uh, nothing. The poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I changed my mind. I'm going to go get Sayori. So, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself, Monica calls out after me. I quicken my pace. Something about Monica is very much rubbing me the wrong way. <laughs> what was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walk, even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That she's, that, uh, that's all she needs and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? That's really something his boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. It's kind of a breach of privacy, but she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. No! Oh no! Oh my God. Oh, no! What's happening? What? Oh my goodness! What the hell is right? Oh, what the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Oh, okay, I need a second. <laughs> no. Ah, oh, okay. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Oh, Sayori. <laughs> oh no, I'm so upset. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I knew what's best and that everything will be okay. I knew it, I knew something insane was gonna happen. I could sense it, I felt it in my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think this though. <sighs> I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her? I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. Did she just need a friend? No. We 
pressured her to change things and she didn't want things to change. <laughs> oh no. Oh God, we should have just stayed being her friend. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, why was I so selfish? This is all my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spend more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it's always been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend, someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I wasn't going to do multiple playthroughs of this, but I think I have to now. <laughs> I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers, but I still couldn't do what she needed from me. You can't change things, but I can. I can change things. And now I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no. Why? Uh, oh my God, I'm sweaty. <sighs> Why? <sighs> What's happening? Oh. It's not over after all? Is that what I'm getting from this? <sighs> okay. So, something is definitely more into the game. I don't know if I should like start a new game or load. <gasps> Say hurry! <laughs> no. <sighs> Okay, well, I'm gonna end the episode there, guys. Let's, let's stop looking at Sayori for a second. <laughs> I'm gonna end this episode here. If you enjoyed, please feel free to uh, like and subscribe to become a little legend, and I will see you in the next part. Peace. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh.